welcome to our Mit So Along with Burnley and Trowbridge. I'm Melissa, and I will be walking you through building a pair of fully lined silk mitts that also have an openwork serpentine slit along the inside of the wrist, as well as a faggoted side seam. This is a two-part sew along. Don't worry when you get to the end of this one and you're not finished with your mitts, there will be another part. In part one, which is this episode, I'm going to show you how to cut out your mitts, fit them, and do the embroidery for decoration. If you are not familiar with any of the techniques that we are using in these videos, please be sure to check out our quick stitch tutorials on our YouTube channel. And those will show you how to do all of the stitches that are necessary for building this type of mitt. The mitts I will be building in this sew along will be fully lined silk mitts. They will be lined with linen and have a silk, contrasting silk tip lining and contrasting embroidery. It is a good idea to watch the entire video before you start working on your mitts. That way you become familiar with the techniques and you can decide if you want to follow along in the exact same order that I am doing things or if you want to mix it up because of the way you are going to be embroidering your mitts. So let's get started. The things that you will need for this sew along are some silk fabric. Today we're going to be using a silk taffeta for our demonstration. Uh, a taffeta or a silk satin are both really good for this purpose. Depending on how long your arms are and whether or not you want to piece your fabric, if you have very long arms, you can use a half to three quarters of a yard of your fashion fabric. If you are not using the outside fabric to do your mitt tips, you just need a scrap of fabric that's big enough to get two mitt tips out of. We're going to use an oyster colored silk taffeta because that will work really nicely with our black fabric as well as our oyster colored embroidery. You will also need something to line your mitts. So we're going to use a black linen for ours. You can also, if you want to, line them in silk or a very, very lightweight leather. You see a lot of leather used in the period, but it is incredibly difficult to find a suitable leather in this day and age. So may not be something you really want to try. In addition to your fabrics, you will need sewing thread to be able to do part of the construction of the mitts. You will also need some sort of an embroidery thread. This could be a metallic, uh, silk, or cotton. We're going to be using our oyster colored silk quilters twist to do our embroidery and our faggoting construction portions. Um, you could also use our buttonhole weight. It depends how fine you want your embroidery to be. Um, the buttonhole twist is a little bit heavier than the quilter's weight. So that's something for you to think about when you make your choice. You can also, if you have some silk embroidery floss at home, you can use that as well. We do not recommend using wax with silk threads or silk fabrics because the wax will take away the luster of your silk threads, especially for embroidery. And it will also, if you get your mitts warm or you press them, that wax will seep out of the thread and make spots on your fabric. You will also need your basic sewing supplies, scissors, needles, uh, I encourage you to use a, an embroidery needle for the embroidery portions. For sewing, you can use whatever type of needle you are comfortable, most comfortable with. Um, a thimble, if you are a thimble user. You will need something to transfer your pattern markings and your embroidery markings onto 
your fabric. There are innumerable ways of doing this. Um, the way I'm going to show you today, I will be using a chalk pencil that is a uh, automatic pencil that has three colors of chalk in it. We unfortunately don't sell these because they're not 18th century, but I really like them. Um, they give a good line that will eventually fade, but doesn't brush off real easily. You can use a plain lead pencil if you're using something light colored. You can use the Frixion markers, which come off with heat. Fair warning, do a test on your fabric before you decide to mark it all up with this type of a marker. They usually come out well, but depending how long you leave the marks on your fabric and if you're wearing them in the cold, the marks can come back. So just be careful and do a test before deciding to use something like this. If you need to use an embroidery hoop, that is entirely up to you. I personally prefer to do my embroidery without a hoop, but you are more than welcome to use a hoop. Make sure it's big enough to cover your embroidery space. If you're going to use an embroidery hoop, I do strongly suggest that you wrap the inside of the hoop with a cotton tape or strips of fabric or something like that. And I've only done the inside on this particular hoop, but you'll also want to do the outside portion of the hoop. That way it's going to be less inclined to mar your fabric and it will give you a tighter fit um, because it's just a single layer of silk going into the hoop and it may decide to wiggle on you or get loose. If you do choose to use a hoop, don't leave the hoop on your fabric when you are not working on it because it will leave marks in your fabric or it can. It may not, you might get lucky, but why take the chance? Another thing you might want to use, which is something that Christina showed in her shirt so along, is called tiger tape, which has little marks on it. It sticks to your fabric. And this way you can keep your stitches really even and evenly spaced. Um, it's entirely up to you. If you want to use something like that, you can make little measurement marks on your fabric if you want to. Um, or you can just practice until you get really good at doing even stitches. I almost forgot the most important thing. You're going to want to have a copy of the Burnley and Trowbridge mitts pattern that we have published. It is a digital download available in the pattern section of our website. And this is the pattern that we're going to be using today for your mitts sew along. In the instructions for your mitt pattern, it does explain to you how to measure yourself to figure out what size you need to cut for your mitts. Uh, you want to take a measurement around your hand, just below your knuckles, and then a measurement around the widest part of your forearm. Compare those to the chart that is in the instructions, and that will tell you what size you need to cut out. So the mitts I'm making for this sew along are for Angela, who is the owner of the company and she needs a new pair of mitts. I measured her. She measures out to a pretty standard size medium, but much shorter than I would make my mitts. So I've cut out the pattern with the mitt tip attached. And for the way I'm going to transfer the embroidery design today, I have taken the embroidery template B and have actually taped it to my pattern. And then I have taken a pin and I have poked holes at the top and bottom points of each of the embroidery lines. I've also gone and put little holes 
around just inside the stitching line for your thumb as a registration point so that I don't have to worry about making sure that I get the thumb on there correctly. I'll know exactly where it needs to sit. So when you're going to embroider your mitts, you need to think about whether or not you are going to embroider them using a hoop. If you are going to use a hoop, make sure that it's big enough to be able to do your embroidery comfortably and that you are going to have room to secure the fabric in the hoop. This size, which is a five inch hoop, I find to be comfortable. A six inch might be more comfortable depending on how much room you want between the edges of the hoop and the work that you're doing. You also want to make sure that when you place your mitts pattern on the fabric, you are not too close to an edge so that you wouldn't be able to hoop the fabric. You want to leave at least an inch to two inches beyond the edge of your hoop to be able to pull the fabric taut inside the hoop. So I've decided where I need to place my pattern on the fabric. Make sure that you are on grain, which is actually on the bias for mitts. My preferred method of doing this is using a clear plastic ruler or a quilter's ruler. That way you can see through it easily and um, matching an end to my grain line and then making sure that it is straight on my selvage. Then you can either pin or use your creative weights like cell phone, tape dispenser, whatever, to hold your pattern down. If I'm going to be using a pattern multiple times, I personally like to print it out on cardstock and that way it's a little easier to draw around and it's, it's sturdier when you're using it. So I'm going to take my chalk pencil and just outline the mitts as well as the thumb hole and my all my little holes that I made in the pattern as registration marks. When you do your pattern this way, don't forget that you want to flip the pattern to the opposite side to do the second mitt. Otherwise, you're going to have two right hand mitts. So now that I have traced out my pattern onto the silk, you can see that I just have the three endpoints to each of my embroidery lines. So what I'll do is take my ruler, make a straight line between those points and chalk that in on all three. You might be tempted to cut your mitts out at this point in time. I strongly suggest that you wait until you have done your embroidery. It can be done with the mitts cut out. I have done it, but it's easier to keep your attention. And if you do choose to use an embroidery hoop, you can actually hoop it without having to add pieces of fabric. If you have a pair of mitts at home that you've already made or purchased somewhere and you decide that you want to embellish them a little bit, that is perfectly fine. We have seen extant mitts that the embroidery goes through the fashion fabric as well as the lining. So they were obviously embroidered after they were built. If you haven't embroidered in a while or if you're new to embroidery, 
I do suggest that you do a sample so that you can get comfortable with the stitches and consistent with the size and spacing before you start actually embroidering your project. If you start looking at extant garments, there are innumerable ways of doing the embroidery on them. Other popular stitches that are used for doing this type of a simple embellishment include straight stitch, chain stitch, and a stem stitch. So if you would prefer to do that, you are more than welcome to. They're your mitts, and I'm not going to tell you how you have to em embellish them. But for this example, I am going to do the herringbone stitch. This is one of those times that if you are not comfortable with eyeballing or doing your spacing by feel, you can use the tiger tape and put it on next to your embroidery lines, and that will help you to get very nice, even spacing. When you're doing embroidery, you also do not want to use an incredibly long thread as you're doing it because that will cause the thread to abrade and it will lose its sheen on silk. It will also be more inclined to knot up. What most embroiderers suggest, I've heard it referred to as a lady thread or a working thread, which is about from your fingertips to your elbow or approximately 18 inches. Since this thread is put up on a card, it's got a kink when you pull it off of the card. So I am going to go ahead and run this under the iron just to get rid of that kink and make it a little bit easier for me to work. So to start this, we will anchor our thread. I personally like to do a waist knot on the top of my fabric and then do a small back stitch where I'm going to begin stitching and it will be covered up by my first stitches. If you prefer to tie a knot on the back or do another way of anchoring your threads, that's fine. It's entirely up to you. I'm just showing you the way that I do it. You'll notice that I put my waist knot on the embroidery guideline. That is so I'm not creating an extra hole in the silk. So I've started at the upper left-hand corner of my embroidery guideline, and then I'm moving to the right and below the guideline and taking a small stitch. So that we make a line that crosses that guideline. I will then go up above the guideline and to the right again. And make my next stitch. You do want to try to make your end point of a stitch about perpendicular to the beginning point of the previous stitch. So you want this point down here to be pretty much perpendicular to this point up here. So now that I've finished that line of embroidery, I'm going to do my three lazy daisy stitches. A lazy daisy stitch is basically a, an individual elongated chain stitch. So I like to start in the center petal. I need to take just a little anchoring stitch 
right here in the center of my line. Make a loop with my thread. Go back into the fabric just almost exactly where my previous stitch came out. Decide about how long I want my loop to be. If you want to be really particular about this part, you can measure and mark this end point for your loops. I do it by eye. It's entirely up to you. So we'll pull our loop. You don't want to pull it super tight. You still want to leave a little bit of um, roundness to the end of your, your stitch. Go back down through the fabric on the opposite side of the thread that makes up that loop. And then you come back up to the side of your first loop, the starting point of the side of your first loop. Now we'll do another loop. You can make it the same size. You can make it a little bit shorter, depending on the look you want. Um, you can also make it further, more perpendicular to your first stitch, or you can make it very close to that, that first loop or pedal. Pull that up. Anchor at the end of your loop. And then we'll do the third petal on the opposite side. You can do it from one side to the other. I prefer doing it from the center and then doing each side. And then you can anchor your thread and move on to the next line of stitching. Now that you have your embroidery done, you can go ahead and move on to cutting out your mitts. When you cut out your mitt body, you do want to go ahead and cut out the thumb hole at this point because the next thing we are going to do is try them on and do a fit check and make any necessary adjustments so that we get a little gap between what would normally be your two sides of your seam line. That way we can do the fagging stitch instead of a regular seam to make a nice fancy pair of mitts and also give us a little bit more elasticity because silk is not a very stretchy fabric. The fagging stitch will give us just a little more ease to be able to get into the mitts and keep a nice close fit while you are wearing them. Once you get your mitts cut out, then you need to check your fit. So Angela has come up to help me do that since these are for her. I'm lucky. She's lucky. Oh, they look so pretty. And, hmm. So it looks like I have just enough to be able to do the faggoting stitch. Now the next thing that's important is to make sure that you can get the mitts off because most people, their wrist is smaller than their hand and so they may get stuck coming off. All right, so we'll see. Oh, it's stuck on your thumb. <laughs> Oh, 
I am making some clips in the thumb hole uh, because it will be covered up by the thumb, but it was a little snug around Angela's thumb. So you can just make a, a few little clips. Just don't go past those marks where you're going to actually stitch your thumb onto the mitt. I actually prefer to do the pinning at this point with safety pins just because you're less inclined to get stuck. But since we work in the 18th century here, we don't have safety pins. So just if you, you do use straight pins, just be careful when you are taking the mitts off of yourself or your customer. And there we go. And if they are a little difficult to get off, that's okay because when we put our faggoting stitches in on the seam as well as on the little serpentine opening at the wrist, it will help them to expand as they go on, but then come kind of bounce back so that they will stay snug on the arm. All right, thank you, Angela. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Once you have your mitts fit, then we need to make some adjustments to the seam allowance because your seam lines will not actually be meeting the way they would if you were sewing a traditional seam or a whipped seam. So we're going to cut our seam allowance down to just an eighth of an inch from our seam line as opposed to the quarter inch that is allowed by the pattern. Then when we fold our quarter inch under on either side and hem this to the lining, then we will have a quarter inch opening to do our faggoting stitch to attach the two sides of our mitt together. Since my pin line is a seam line, I want to just measure an eighth of an inch out from those pins. Since the mitt is still pinned as it came off of the arm, I can just cut down the seam allowance on both sides at the same time. Once you have your seam allowance cut down to where it needs to be, you can take out your fitting pins and you can either use the same measurements to cut out your lining or you can just use your outer mitt piece as your pattern to cut out your lining pieces. Since I decided to do a contrasting mitt tip lining, when I cut my mitt lining, I went ahead and cut it straight across at the top and then I added the mitt tip lining piece to the top edge of my mitt lining. So what we will do for this particular style is to fold under a quarter inch all the way around on the fashion fabric and the lining piece. If you want to, you can go ahead and press your lining and your fashion fabric with the iron, It'll give you a nice good crease. Or you can just finger press it. So after you have your pieces folded in, make sure that they are wrong sides together, especially if you have added a an extension to your mitt lining. And you can pin or base them together. And your lining should, if it doesn't sit flush with the edge of the mitt fold, it should sit just inside of it. 
once you get it all pinned around, we'll take some of our uh, silk thread, silk sewing thread, and we will hem the two pieces together. If you're not sure how to do a hemming stitch, please check out our quick stitch tutorial on doing a hemming stitch. You have your entire mitt hemmed and ready to go. You will also need to get your thumbs ready to set into your mitts or onto your mitts. At this point, you want to prepare your thumb for attaching to your mitts. You can use any of the methods that are in the mitt instructions. For today's example, I'm going to treat it the same way that we did the body of our mitt and I'm going to fold it down and hem it all the way around. Thank you for joining us for part one of our two-part Mitts Sew Along video. Make sure you join us for part two of our Sew Along so that you can finish your mitts and tag us with your makes on Instagram and Facebook and like this video, share it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, I'm Melissa and just keep sewing.